Most English language accounts of the First World War have left a strong image in the public mind. Europe is seen as a continent of rich, opulent aristocrats, enjoying the fruits of empires and successful industrialization, with common people living modestly, but in far greater comfort than in the preceding century. This vision of Europe's eternal summer is then swept away in a sudden convulsion and transformed into a landscape of muddy trenches, where hundreds of thousands of men live, struggle, and kill each other. Constantly bombarded by artillery and subjected to gas attacks, the soldiers occasionally attempt to push forward across an alien landscape of craters and barbed wire, perishing in huge numbers as their attacks falter and fade for little or no gain. Like all such images, these contain a great deal that is true, but also fail to capture the entire picture. Even before the fatal shots fired in Sarajevo started the avalanche that led to war, tensions threatened the entire continent. Workers in Russia remained restless, frequently clashing with the police and troops. Italy and the Austro-Hungarian Empire eyed each other warily over their common border. And even in Britain, it was clear that the crisis in Ireland had the potential to erupt into serious violence. Similarly, the picture of trench warfare as a motif for the First World War is misleading. During the years that British, French, German, Belgian, and American soldiers fought and died in northern France and western Belgium, another war raged in Eastern Europe, consuming soldiers on a scale to match the bloody battles of the Western Front. Yet although this war, too, had long periods of static warfare, it was dominated by huge movements, as the armies advanced and retreated hundreds of miles. Major cities changed hands. The initiative swung back and forth between the nations involved, and by the end of the war, the conflict had consumed the empires of Germany, Russia, Austria-Hungary, as well as devastating Serbia and Romania. The splintering of these empires created a patchwork of nations, from Finland and Estonia in the north to the new Yugoslavia in the south, sowing the seeds for conflicts that continued for the rest of the century. Yet this war in the east had received scant attention in accounts written in the west. Despite the many differences between the two theatres, the Eastern Front and Western Front also had their similarities. Forcing a decisive result proved to be equally difficult in the East as in the West, and troops positioned in prepared defences were able to repulse almost any attack. But the density of troops in the East was far less than in the West, meaning that there was always the possibility of finding a vulnerable flank or exploiting a local weakness.